The 100,000 Genomes Project brings together scientific research, diagnostic testing, and the development of new services for NHS patients in a single project which is being run by Genomics England. Putting together 100,000 genetic codes, genomes, alongside information about patients' health now and in the future, gives researchers the best possible chance of understanding the causes of illness and of developing new treatments. The project is collecting the entire genetic code, known as a genome, from 70,000 people with either rare diseases or cancer. Your genome is the instruction manual for your body. It's made of DNA and contains information needed to make you, run you and repair you. It can be read letter by letter using a technique called sequencing. Unexpected changes in the letters may explain why someone has a disease, but we don't know as much as we'd like. And that's when comparing your genome to those of others with your condition might give us that extra clue we need. If you've been invited to take part in the project, you either have a rare disease or are related to someone who does, or you have a suspected or diagnosed cancer. So we were asked by our consultant to take part in the 100,000 genomes and we decided that we didn't know the cause of Harry's cataracts and we may not ever find out the cause of it, but we were willing to take part in the trial because even if it didn't help us, it might help other people. I had already heard about the project through the, the media, but uh, the first time I was um, told anything directly uh, in the context of my disease was from my consultant. When my consultant told me that I had cancer, they suggested that I take part in the project. But I don't really understand what I may be letting myself in for. Before agreeing to take part, you'll be given much more information about the project and will be taken through a detailed consent process when the project will be fully explained to you. There are a number of decisions you'll be asked to make, but you'll be given the opportunity to ask questions if anything concerns you and you can say you don't want to take part at any point. If you agree to take part, you'll need to give some samples. We were sent the forms in advance by email, so I had a chance to look through them and think about uh, which questions I might like to ask. I was able to talk it through with the clinical nurse and they helped me to understand uh, the questions that I had and I felt comfortable when I'd made my decisions. I, I, I was impressed with the material. It was easy to read, it was very comprehensive. Um, it laid out the protections to the data, which is obviously a big thing in this day and age. The consent process encouraged me to think a bit more about issues of confidentiality, the likelihood of uh, benefit of that information to my children. You said samples? What sort of samples? When patients with cancer participate, we take a sample of both their normal genome and their cancer genome because these are different and we can learn things by comparing the two. If you choose to participate, then we'll ask you for a blood sample or a saliva sample and we'll use a sample of the cancer tissue that is taken as part of your normal treatment. For those with rare diseases, we need to look at the genome of the person affected, plus, ideally, two others. They have to be close biological relatives, like a mum and dad, brothers or sisters. I knew the project needed, as well as myself, um, at least two of my children. I've got four. Three were very happy to take part. You'll also be asked whether you want to be tested for a few other rare but treatable genetic conditions that you might develop in the future. Those wanting children will also be offered carrier testing. Both of these choices are optional. If I don't want to know, will you know? No. If you choose not to receive additional findings, then we simply won't look for them. How likely am I to have one of these conditions? Very unlikely. They are rare, and we anticipate that the overwhelming majority of patients who opt to receive these findings won't actually be found to have any of these conditions. What will this mean for my family, and who will tell them? If there are any significant findings that arise as part of your involvement in the project, then they'll be fed back to you by your clinician here at the hospital as part of your normal care, and your clinician will be able to help you decide who needs to be told and support you in how you tell them. I did opt for uh, having the additional findings um, uh, done for my uh, personal health benefit and those of my children in terms of their exposure to risk. 
I knew the project needed, as well as myself, um, at least two of my children. I've got four. Three were very happy to take part in practice. Uh, the two daughters, twin daughters, non-identical, um, did actually contribute samples. One of them doesn't want to know the results, the other does for the benefit of her children. I was worried about finding out if uh, he might be predisposed to any other conditions because that in itself can bring anxiety and worry to the family. So I presume you will also need to know about my illness too? Having that health information is really important. Genomics England use it to make sense of your DNA. In the early stages of the project, it will take at least a year or longer to get your results back. It's quite likely that they won't find out anything at all that will help you right now. That's because there's so much about our genomes that we simply don't understand. But it will make a difference for future generations. Well, we're not sure that we're going to achieve the findings that we might like to have for Harry from the project, but the thought that we know we might help other people is, makes the whole project worth doing. I did think it would actually have benefit potentially for my children and society generally to know no more about my particular disease. I am totally aware of the value of this type of information to the community of scientists and therefore patients uh, down the line. We also ask your permission for the NHS to let us know how things turn out for you health-wise in the future. Having your medical records, information about your condition or illness, and your DNA sequence, along with those of lots of other people like you, gives us the best possible chance to find out why people get the condition you have, and possibly how to treat it too. But before we put your data in our high security data centre, we take away your name and personal details, and then, under really strict conditions of access, we allow researchers, including for-profit healthcare companies, to look at it. I wasn't uh, concerned about who'd have access to the data. Having read the paperwork, which made clear where the data was going, who was going to have access to it, and the protections that it uh, would be afforded to it. Medicines and new diagnostic tests are not developed by the NHS, but by many different healthcare companies, large and small. Letting them use these data, which they can't ever take away, means that new treatments and diagnostic tests can be developed as quickly as possible. This is valuable information. It will increase the level of, of our communal knowledge and, and the benefits that arise from it. So I absolutely have no problem with that. They're not interested in you as an individual, just the big picture. And if companies develop successful treatments as a result of using the data, they'll have to come to an arrangement which benefits the NHS. If a drug company has access to it, then I just see that as a benefit to other people in the future. It can only be helpful. Do I have to tell my insurance company or anyone else that I'm involved in this? And what if they ask? The insurance industry have agreed that they're not going to ask people if they're participating in this project. And even if they or anybody else asks you, then you don't have to tell them. I did have some concerns about insurance. In my particular case, my insurers know that I have uh, heart disease anyway. I was certainly told that, that the insurance will not have access to this information. And in any case, the, the, the information is anonymised and therefore it would be very difficult to link it to a, a specific individual. There's actually quite a lot of information there, isn't there? Thank you so much for answering all of my questions and giving me enough time to fully consider all of my options. The DNA from the samples is sent to Genomics England scientists. Using state-of-the-art high-speed machines, they can map your entire genome. This is what a tiny bit of the genome looks like once it's been decoded. We'll want to keep in touch with you and we may ask additional questions. I understand that my cancer may or may not be curable, but if this provides a better future for somebody, then I believe it's worth doing. Allowing researchers to work with the data from all the people involved in the project will create a legacy for generations to come. If you're interested in taking part, you'll be provided with detailed information as part of the consent process. And of course, you can ask any questions you want.